We have to think of this beyond the immediate and think about it in the future. And that's one of the challenges of the city, which to me, the city's always neglected. The city's answer has been to put people in shelters and you warehouse them and forget about them. The problem is off the streets, we don't see it. It's, it's fixed, right? It's not the way. The, the, we have a right to shelter law in the city, which interprets people think it's a right to house, which means the city has an obligation to put you in a shelter on a given night. And this city has close to 600 shelters. And the more you ask for shelters, the more the city will build them. It has become an incredible infrastructure and an incredible business, even though they're run by quote unquote not for profits. The argument with all those not for profit folks with me is, well, Rob, you benefited from the shelter system. Why are you so against it? Because it's a place that you folks have come to warehouse bodies. It's not getting at the root cause of the issue, right? So that experience for me is one of the reasons why I talk about it constantly, to share those experiences in the understanding because we have to get the story out there, right? The other thing, and this is personal for me, we've always painted homelessness in this country with broad strokes. You're homeless because you have mental illness. You're homeless because you have chemical addiction. You're homeless because you have all of these problems. You don't want to work. And Well, I went into the shelter with a 30-year work history. I wasn't an alcoholic. I didn't have mental illness. I wasn't a drug addict. So what's up? <laughs> yeah. uh, Lance, you want to talk about shivering poverty, maybe your experience uh, with Roma and, and how it was treated and so on. Yeah, the question of shelter, uh, we've been trying to understand the mechanism that produced uh, shelter instead of houses. Uh, it's a mechanism that cost double. Uh, that cost double and allowed uh, big companies to, to rent to the municipality buildings that produce high level of, uh, of, of uh, incomes and at the same time reduce the, uh, the environment, uh, uh, the, the value of the area. So it's, it's the time where they, by, by making money, they can buy around and then change. And, and, and when it's time that it's ready to change, the shelters are not needed anymore, are not useful anymore, are, these people are becoming dangerous, so there's a good reason for keeping them out. Right. And, and this is especially, it's focused on, not just on Roma people and refugee people, these are the best targets that usually have, and, and they've really been used in, in, this, in this strategy. We have, uh, um, uh, each, it's 30 euro a day, the cost of a shelter per a refugee uh, uh, in Roma for Roma people, uh, <coughs> and the same, it's, it's, it's about, it's about and, and it's becoming an, an incredible, an incredible business, and it is also a strategy to develop the city. Right. Yeah. Miguel prefaced part of this conversation with the Bloomberg administration in 12 years of, of what, you know, he talked about affordable housing. The one thing he did in 2008 was make a, a big public statement, grandstanding as I like to call it. Um, there was an effort with mayors around the country coming out of the mayor's conference in 2008 that they would work with HUD to reduce homelessness by two-thirds in 10 years. Can you tell what's HUD? Because perhaps HUD is Housing and Urban Development, which funds a lot of the shelter systems with specialized money, um, uh, also with Section 8 vouchers, housing. Most of the, a lot of folks who come out of shelter end up getting vouchers in some type of one of the 12 housing programs provided by the federal government. Um, Bloomberg stood up on his bully pulpit and said he'd do it in five years. At that time, the average count in shelters was about 31,000 a night. All right, so now the average count is 52 to 55,000. So he failed miserably at that, and at the same time that he failed at that, they've created 47 more shelters in those five years, right? So, you know, you're not getting rid of the problem by expanding the infrastructure, right? It doesn't make any sense, right? But he'll, he, and I, I think one of the biggest failings of that administration is not bringing folks who are directly affected by the issues to the table to have conversations, right? So um, there was a question we asked him about, I think back in 2007. We got invited to the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, and we went to City Hall, and Bloomberg came in and did an address, and members of Picture the Homeless asked him if he ever slept on a piece of cardboard. <laughs> he looked at us kind of strange. <laughs> and so I asked him again, I stood up and I said, did you ever sleep on a piece of cardboard? 
And he says, no. I said, well, I did for two and a half years. So how is it that you're making decisions about people's lives who have slept on court board and you've never done it, right? But you don't invite those people to the table. This is a, a huge thing also, which uh, turns back into what Lorenzo was mentioning of the cost. You know? And uh, Lorenzo will be even more amazed at the cost here of that. You know? yeah. um, uh, which is how much New York City human resources uh, administration pays for one person to be in a shelter a month. And, um, and this is you know, a debate that we've been having you know, like crazy. And this really draws you to be silent a lot. Especially people in the built environment design. Um, <coughs> with the money, whatever figure you have here, you know, one is really able to cre create a whole new industry of affordable housing, right? where we would be taking part of as designers uh, or as policymakers or as whatever, creating an enormous amount of you know, work for all of us, working on things that really matter. Nevertheless, I mean, the, the, the shelter system, well, this is a picture of them, and, and this is nice compared to several, you know, that, uh, that, that I've seen. Um, uh, that it's uh, spending uh, a huge amount of money. It's very similar. I'm sure all of you have heard of the prison industrial complex. There's no question that we have a shelter industrial complex over here, and that would be, I guess, yeah, the same thing in Italy. No, it's a big business. But the business is not coming to us. I mean, we as designers have very little to do in these spaces, which is kind of stupid if you ask me. So we're talking about huge amounts of money where the design world could really love it, to say, look, guys, you know, we can do much better than that, right? Than those spaces. And as you say, they keep on reproducing. New shelters open yeah. up every single time and every single, you know, moment.